Hey, this is Tom Webster, and this is Sounds Profitable for Wednesday, January 31st. Knowing half the battle in podcasting. With apologies to G.I. Joe, half the battle of podcasting is not the changes in technology, but keeping up with the changes to the audience. And I'm going to dig into the neglected half of the work of podcasting in a moment. But first, this week on the Product Deep Dive, Caleb Mansfield and Brian Barletta demystify the vast possibilities of vast tags. Tune in now for a half-hour discussion on just what video ad-serving templates, despite the name, can do for all forms of podcasting, including how it's used today. Catch it all right now on soundsprofitable.com. Well, here's the thing I think about a lot. How people discover podcasting. Not a particular podcast, but the entire medium. Most of the received wisdom in podcasting today comes from people who discovered it because they were interested in the technical bits, audio enclosures, RSS feeds, etc. Those things still matter. I mean, heck, my first podcast wasn't much more than a Watson Kamir designed to see if I could even do the thing and certainly not to entertain anyone. A lot of the advice we continue to get in podcasting is focused on these things. The tech changes all the time, so I get it. I, too, am interested in the changes in downloads that the recent iOS updates have wrought. We've written about it. I'm keeping up on the continuing evolution of podcasting 2.0 and transcripts and AI and show notes and SEO and cross promos, the size of your cover art, and a hundred other things that don't do anything to make your show great. We've been neck deep in the technicalities and often at the expense of truly grasping who we're speaking to. Well, here's the kicker. Keeping up with the changes in tech is only half the story. The other half, keeping up with shifts in the audience. And wow, how they've changed. The landscape of podcast consumption has shifted dramatically, with video podcasting emerging as a formidable force. And yet there's a palpable resistance, a sort of disdain for this evolution. Never mind that video podcasts are as old as audio podcasts, with pioneers like French Made TV and Revision 3, Beach Walks with Roxanne, and even This Week in Tech, driving the medium forward as much as anyone. It's as if acknowledging video podcasts as a part of our story would somehow dilute the purity of the audio-only experience. But to ignore this trend is to ignore the very essence of what it means to connect with our listeners. The on-ramps have changed. Now, this is not a podcast about video, but I'll pull from that topic to make my point here. Our recent study, Sound You Can See, revealed that video is not pulling listeners away from audio. It's simply offering another avenue for engagement. The audience isn't choosing one over the other. They're embracing both, depending on their environment and circumstances. It's not a zero-sum game. It's an expansion of the playing field. Now, the reasons for this are fairly clear, and I can sum them up in three stats. The percentage of video podcast consumers who discovered podcasting less than five years ago is 83%. So most of the video podcast consumers we have now are fairly new to the medium. The second stat, where did these video podcast consumers first discover podcasting? Well, 41%, the top answer said YouTube. And finally, the percentage of video podcast consumers who also listen to audio podcasts is 86%. Video podcast consumers are also audio podcast consumers. They just came to us in a different way, and they don't look the same as the medium's early adopters. And by the way, the numbers don't lie. In any given month, 18 or 19 of the top 20 podcasts, actual audio podcasts, are also available on YouTube. You can't dismiss that as mere coincidence. And by the way, the audience for just these 20 podcasts represents a double-digit percentage of the entire audience for podcasting. If you started listening to podcasts in the 2000s, your point of entry was very likely iTunes or a piece of software called a podcatcher. That's a thing you'd fire up because you were already a podcast fan and you wanted to listen to a podcast. It's a unitasker, as we say in the kitchen. But the on-ramp to podcasting today is changing. That doesn't mean that the audio-only podcast consumer still doesn't exist. Of course they do. They just have company. If we aren't at least as curious about the changes in the audience for podcasting as we are about changes in RSS specs, 
we are lost. But still, the resistance to these changes persists, fueled by a stubborn adherence to outdated definitions of what a podcast should be. This narrow-mindedness is not just limiting, it's potentially damaging. By dismissing the video podcast audience, we're not just turning our backs on a segment of our own listeners, we're undermining the growth of the medium itself. It's fun to count things until it isn't. And here we come to an inconvenient truth, my friends. What happens if we excise these new listeners from the ranks of podcast consumers? What happens if we agree, because of some received dogma from over 10 years ago, that we just don't count these podcast listeners or the podcasts they happen to watch on YouTube? Here's what happens. All of that recent growth in listeners that we have seen these past few years in podcasting goes away. The truth is, the way people discover and consume podcasts is changing. The on-ramps to podcasting are diversifying, and if we're to thrive in this audio-first but not audio-only world, we need to embrace these changes. We need to be where our audience is, whether that's on traditional podcast platforms or on the screens they're glued to, and we need to be curious and not dismissive about how audiences are changing. Audiences change very quickly. Netflix, once the home of House of Cards and Orange is the New Black, is now a landfill of straight-to-video action clunkers and mediocre stand-up. It took a pandemic, plus Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, and plots to leave the MCU to utterly destroy what was left of the movie-going audience. TikTok, a single brand, has blown right by all of podcasting and monthly users in less than five years. Like General Eric Shinseki famously quipped, if you don't like change, you're going to like irrelevance even less. If I sound frustrated, it's because I am. There are two levers you can move to be a better podcaster. You can learn more about the craft of podcasting, and you can learn more about your audience. And this industry spends almost all of its time in the former to the sad, almost incurious neglect of the latter. But the audience is always in control. And they always will be. I'll close with this. There used to be stores in this country like Tower and Sam Goody where you could buy music in multiple formats, vinyl, cassette, CD, all at the same time, because the listener gets to make the choice. Even today, you can buy most new releases on vinyl, CD, or as digital files through online stores. What matters is the music. Well, here's the brain bender. Your podcast isn't the music. Your show is the music. And it's time to shift our focus from the mechanics of podcasting to the music of our shows. Our content is what matters, and how it reaches our audience, be it through vinyl, CDs, or digital streams, is secondary. The medium may evolve, but the essence of audio-first storytelling remains constant. Let's not be the mini-disc of the podcasting world, clinging to a single format while the world moves on. Let's be the artists, offering our music in whatever form the listeners prefer. So to my fellow podcasters, I say this, let's not limit ourselves with a fixed mindset. Let's be curious, open-minded, and above all, listener-focused. By meeting them where they are, we not only honor their preferences, we also secure the future of our medium. And with that, I'll return to my turntable, ever mindful that the true music lies not in the medium, but in the message that we're sending out to the world. Thanks again for listening to this podcast, Knowing is Half the Battle. This episode is hosted on Spreaker. I'm Tom Webster, and I'll see you next week.